Um, those are words that we refer to in the Ojibwe language, the Finns. So it's uh, meaning the people of the sweat lodge or the people uh, that sound like frogs. <laughs> When somebody's struggling, I try to help them figure out, well, what is some way that we can help you get some energy moving in the right direction? So my family hosts this run, it's coming up next week. Um, and uh, we run like 42 miles around the reservation. Um, and the, when we're running, we are um, praying for the community. Um, we put tobacco ties with prayers for, you know, uh, people who are struggling in our community, for the people who maybe have lost somebody, for people who um, maybe don't have enough to eat, um, people who are, you know, trying to overcome chemical dependency or whatever. We put all these tobacco ties on that one staff and we carry it, we help all the runners who run carry this staff of prayers around the community for 40 some miles. Letting everybody else know, okay, today we're, we're praying for you. My grandmother left Finland and then took a ship to New York City and then ended up in Minnesota eventually. But she did that in 1909 as a young woman. And she didn't have any money, and, and, and I, could, I can feel the way she felt, you know, leaving on a ship from Finland. And I, I always picture her holding onto the railing and watching Finland get smaller and smaller and smaller, and there would be a point when it disappeared. And she knew she would never see that again. No, I'm calling for my husband. Is Dr. Joe Bianco in today? Okay, alrighty. I will call in the morning then. Thanks a lot, bye-bye. He's there tomorrow, tomorrow morning, he's not there today. I don't know if he should wait, but 
well, I'll wait another hour or so and see how he's doing. If he doesn't get any better, then I'm going to bring him in. Are they picking the raspberries? Mm -hmm. Good. We'll roll in with picking raspberries. Yes. Yeah. My berry picker. Yes, he's wonderful. He's especially thin when he's ill. You know, it's like, well, if I'm going to die, then I'll die. All right. So you're not feeling good. Why don't you tell me what your symptoms are right now? You said body oh, aches? I'm hurting. Yeah, body aches. Uh, I had trouble walking. Yesterday, I, I couldn't walk. You're unstable? Okay. Yeah, yesterday, I couldn't walk at all. Okay. And, uh, fever? I don't think he has a fever anymore, but he was very feverish last night. Okay. And fever broke about five in the morning. Okay. Give me, give me a bite. Scale of zero to ten, how would you say your pain is? Uh, six. Okay. Uh, my old man is a Finian. Probably have a healing song, probably a couple days or something, to get him better. He's like one of the one of the last people who know a lot of things around here. So I learned the bell making from him a little bit, and um, regalia making of the dance style I was doing at Apollo. Kind of learned of uh, some of the things that he taught me. So. Trying to make sure I kind of give everything back, trying to make some things for him. The regalia is, um, is the most common of, uh, nowadays it's a common uh, thing for uh, people to tell the past of the stories of uh, who we were, were as a warriors, as a, as a women, as a, was it? People, what we used to do of, before going to battles or performing ceremonies, and it's still going on. Seitsemäntoista vuotiaana itsemurhaa suunnitellut lääkäri Arne Vaini on tänään yksi Amerikan menestyneimmistä fintiaaneista. I believe my grandfather came here in 1903, and my grandmother came in 1908. My grandmother came from Pori, Finland, and my grandfather was born in Yala, Finland. I was born in 1958, and you know my childhood was in the 1960s and the early 70s. But there were still a lot of um, negative stereotypes about about Finnish people when I was when I was growing up, and certainly about Indian people. And I grew up not on a reservation, but in a town that was close to one. And there's a lot of there's a lot of hatred and a lot of bigotry in, in that area kind of surrounding some of those things. And it, growing up as a, as a Finnish and native, but not being either one of them fully, it's like you take heat from both sides. And we had a bar, my um, mother and father owned a bar called the Good Luck Tavern. And, uh, it was July 17th in 1963, and I was um, just, a few, and just a few months shy of becoming five. And he had been drinking heavily, and he was drinking heavily in those days. Um, because the business wasn't going well and, um, you know, a lot of arguing and a lot of fighting. And he was uh, taking some kind of tranquilizers, and I don't know exactly what those were. But, uh, but my mom said he walked through the bar that day and, and uh, said he was going to kill himself. And there was a lady at the bar, one of the customers, that uh, said as he walked out, you goddamn Finlanders don't have the guts to shoot yourselves. And that was the last sentence that he heard. And he walked across the street into a field, or across the road, into a field and he shot himself. You know, leaving my mom with five kids. So she started drinking and it was a bar, you know, so everybody drank, I guess. But <clears throat> we were at home and my, I had an older sister that was in charge and she was watching us and she was six or seven years old. But we were actually, we were playing with matches underneath the table in the bar and uh, we burned our bar down, we burned our house down. And so we ended up separated for a while as kids because there was no place for us to go. And so we ended up staying with other people for a while.
And I actually started drinking myself when I was about 14. And it was easy, it was available. It was almost expected. It was no, you know, for me to be drinking when I was that young was not unusual. And, um, and I drank for years. Baarimikkona, Sahalla ja Pelastuslaitoksella toiminut Arne Vainio työskentelee nyt 11 vuottaan Intiani reservaatin klinikalla palkittuna perhelääkärin. I wouldn't wish that, that, that family history on anyone, but you know, I'm, that history is part of me. It's who I am. My mother had diabetes. She ended up with, she was on dialysis for years. She had both her legs amputated. She got a kidney transplant and she died of congestive heart failure on the night that I graduated from residency. We see a lot of diabetes and we see amputations and we see renal failure and we see all of these problems. And when I walk into a room and there's somebody like that, my mother's with me. You know, when somebody's suicidal, my father is with me. Arne Vainion puoliso Aivi Vainio on perimältään Ojibwe Intiaani, Bahama Saarelainen ja hieman puolalainenkin. Pariskunnalla on kymmenvuotias poika Jacob. Ojibwe Intiaanit ovat antaneet suomalaisille ainakin kaksi nimitystä. Inini means man and uh, madudu means sweat bath. So madudu inini is sweat bath man. So for the saunas, the Finnish people, And then one of the other names that we heard that um, that Ojibwe names that they had for Finnish people was um, Omakaki and Inni. So Omakaki is frog, and, and Inni again is man. And it's not like they look like frogs or anything, but they thought their language when they were talking sounded like frogs croaking. And um, so that was one of the other names for Finnish people. Find vainios, which I think would be fairly common, hopefully in Finland, um, that we can connect with. I mean. I want to find our family. My name is Sean Sokola Jr. My father's name was Sean Sokola Sr. Uh, I live at home with my mom, Crystal Moose. Um, and I guess I'm a, I'm a quarter Finnish. My uh, grandfather was full-blooded Finnish and he His grandfather, I think, moved down here a long time ago, and um, um, I guess that's my English name, is Sean Sokola, but my Native American name is uh, Mino Nibue Nadezi. Everybody kind of teasing me, I don't know, because they <laughs> Finnish and Indian put it together, they got Findian, I don't know. I got Anishinaabe and my blood is uh, what, what we call ourselves, so then they called it, instead of just Findi, and they called me a Finnish in Abe, so that's what, I'm, that's what I am today. I know many other Findians. <laughs> it's kind of what's in today, I don't know. It's the new thing, huh? Yeah, it's the new thing. <laughs> Sean Soukkala odottaa illan hämärtyessä yhä kännykkäyhteyttä heimonsa poppamieheen, jonka on määrä tulla vihkimään hänen uusi rumpunsa. Ilman pyhää seremoniaa ei kapinallinen fintiaanikaan lyö täällä rumpua. Um, there's, there's a cross racism that goes on in the reservations where no one is, is um, strengthened or, or empowered by their own who they are, so they feel like they're not native enough or not white enough and, and it happens in both scenarios so me, me going to school in, in a white school and going home to a reservation it's at home you're not native enough and at school you're not white enough and, and you never fit in either way. I'm in school right now so I, I was thinking like I don't know either some sort of politician or, or or maybe uh, just mechanic or musician. I knew that my dad was Finnish and I knew that my mom was Indian, but I didn't really think about my cultural identity so much until I got a little bit older and other kids started making comments about me being um, a Finlander you know, or me being an Indian, and then I started to really think about what that, you know, meant.
And then or later, when I was older, then started to really kind of look at it and think about, well, how are these people from opposite sides of the planet similar, or how are they different? Um, to use the term Findian, just you know, kind of made sense. Like, yeah, I'm a Findian, and what of it? You know, like this is how I was made. You know, they come from the, you know, that same birch bark band, you know, that runs across the top of the globe. and you know, the same kind of country and the same kind of topography and, and you know, they have a lot of the same, you know, the same qualities and, you know, so it was natural that they would gravitate towards each other. This is a porky roach um, headdress, and it's made from porcupine hair, uh, not the quills, the hair. And it's, it's made on a loom that's one long string, and two or three of these hairs is tied on at a time all the way across. And then there's, it's doubled around the top here. There's a shorter piece here where it's double hair. And this here is deer tail hair that's been dyed bright yellow. And these are all sewn onto a base that's just knitted or crocheted yarn. It's beautiful and dramatic in a dancing circle. Why Indians and Finns are the same? Why they why they married each oh, other? Oh, because they drink alike. <laughs> they do. They go out and they work real hard, don't do any drinking for a long time, come back, and then they really drink. Nope. They think about the woods the same. Yep. So fins, when the Finns were here, they did a lot of trapping and collecting, and, but didn't, didn't, not out of greed, just more or less because... That's how they lived. To, and to leave enough for... For others. For, for others and to recover things. All right, that was night sky. You got a freeze right there to... When the first time I went into this sweat lodge, I was like, well, this is just a sauna without getting clean. <laughs> it was the same, you know. We were always brought up believing that this sauna was a sacred place. And that, you know, that you went there because it didn't just clean your body, but it cleaned your spirit too. I understood that there were ceremonies around, you know, lighting the sauna and cleaning the sauna. And I understood that there were spirits in those rocks, you know, that's what Mumu told me. So going into the sweat lodge was very familiar. I 
think some of the best things about me are because of my grandmother, my Finnish grandmother. And she was love and she was kindness. And we took saunas when we were little. I, my, one of my first and only memories of my father. My father committed suicide when I was four years old. And one of my, my earliest memories of him or was him opening and closing the, the door in the, in the changing room of my grandmother's sauna, trying to get some, some cool air in there. And, um, and it was hot. It was really hot. And, and I was cleaning, my hair was squeaky, and I was so tired after that, and I, was, I had to be less than four years old. <clears throat> and I remember him carrying me back to the house. And it was, there was a cool breeze and cicadas were buzzing in the trees. And, um, and I remember that tonight when we were here. I remember that feeling and being with my father and being in my grandmother's sauna. Oh, hey, Riley, it's so good to see you. <laughs> so good to see you. How are you? We're great. No, oh, it's so good to be here. We're going to, we're heading for Puri uh, tomorrow, probably. Have you found relatives in Puri? Uh, no. No. I cannot find them either mm -hmm. from our history books. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. Mm. We're glad you're our relatives here. Yes. <laughs> So, oh, that's a nice picture. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's their home. Yes, there's a bigger picture. I mean, oh, there's another one up on there. Oh. And we found old letters in that in that steamer yeah. chest too. And one of them we had, yeah, one of them we had translated, and it was from Amanda's family in Finland, thanking my grandfather for sending a hundred marks. Saan lausua paljon terveisiä teille meiltä kaikilta yhteisesti ja tietä antaa, että me vielä elossa ja saan suuresti kiittää siitä. And uh, the letter was written maybe six months after he sent, you know, he sent that money, but, and it came as a surprise, and they said that was such a, such a great gift, and it came at a, you know, it came at a, a good time. Was there smoke in this sample sauna? No, so, it was so clean and so fresh. There's soot on... Was it black? Oh, it is black. Yeah, yeah, so... Yeah, so you sit on towels, you know, they just give you a small towel to sit on. And then so we went into the hottest one, you know, they, they didn't think Steve and I could handle the, the hottest one, but we, you know, we didn't want to come all the way here for the mildest one, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm, I'm planning on building a sabu zone next year. That was fun. <laughs> Caption this. Yeah. <laughs> will be good. to doctor him. I asked the spirits. I asked his grandfather and his great-grandfather's spirits to come and doctor him. They were both medicine people. I asked the bear, bear medicine people to doctor him.
So my Indian name is Netana Gamokwe, which means the lady who knows how to sing. And I didn't receive that until my, uh, till I think I was 20. Um, in Ojibwe community, we say that we are all born and we already have a name and we are born into a clan and we need to find out what that name is. Um, and find out what our clan is if it isn't obvious. Usually the clan comes down through the father, but my dad is Finnish. So um, I had to ask a, a spiritual person about what my clan membership is. So I'm an Eagle Clan, Megizi Indodim. Um, that's how we say I'm Eagle Clan. And my Indian name, Netana Gamukwe, means the lady who knows how to sing. And um, a lot of the ways that the uh, spirits nudge me or tell me what to do, um, encourage me to do, do different things is through sound and through music, through songs. What's the next verse? Uh, <laughs> if you come and visit me now. If you come and visit me, then the one thing you will see. Fifteen blonde and the Finnish kids that look exactly like it me. Feed them kala moyaka, sometimes reach to Nipurua, in a shack in a swamp of the Hagi Dallas, known as number seven. But the good scouts come to the Melian East Coast, highway number seven. That's how I learned how to count up in Finn. That's as oh. high as I know how to count is because of that song. <laughs> you like pickles on your burger, Jagger? Mm hmm. Do you? Yeah. Really? I didn't know that. I'll throw a couple pickles on there. I think I have a little leftover pickle. For me, being mixed. Uh, growing up on the reservation, I, I try to celebrate being Findian. Um, and some people think that's awesome, and other people think I'm being foolish, uh, that I should just talk about being Ojibwe, because that's my legal identification. Um, but uh, I can only be who I am. I want to be fluent in the Anishinaabe language eventually at some point, and maybe even a little bit Finnish too, but uh, I want to be able to, to understand both, both worlds, both cultures. You know, I, I worry because he's so much older than I am and he doesn't give up doing what he did when he was 50 and he's 80. And so, of course, that's hard on him. This is the first time that he went into the doctor and he had high white blood count and they did a urinalysis and he has urinary tract infection, which is a problem easily solved. So it's very good news. I was only told about my only old, old man. He only told me about a little bit of the Finnish culture. I didn't know a whole bunch of it. I was just like, hmm. Didn't, like I always do, don't care, don't think about it. Just carry on my own life till I, uh, he been uh, having people over and he's been saying about the Finnians and all those stuff. Then I kind of got interested a little bit. My grandfather died when I was 14, my grandmother died when I was 21, and after that, I just kind of quit being Finnish, and it didn't have that, that exposure. And um, when I applied to medical school, when I was 30, I applied as an Ojibwe uh, person and have been an Ojibwe physician, and I work on a Fond du Lac reservation, I work on an Indian reservation, and I love it. 
and um, and I love that that part of my culture. But more and more in the last few decades, that Finnish part of me has has reawakened, and to be able to come to Finland and to celebrate that part of who I am is is just so important. Yeah, Jim's mom was Finn. My dad was Finn. Everybody we know is half Finn. Yeah. <laughs> it is a good combination. Oh, I'm a Finnish in Abbe. That's the way I got to be. Oh, I'm a Finnish in Abbe. That's the way I got to be. If you like the sauna and power, come spend some time with me. Oh, the Finns and the Indians, they get along so fine. Yes, the Finns and the Indians, they get along so fine. Just look at all the Finns and this family of mine. Just a child in her little homestead kitchen. We'd sit and talk for a while. She always spoke to me softly. With care, she chose her words, being sure to speak in English her Finnish. I rarely heard. On Christmas Eve, she'd come. Bearing gifts crafted by hand That she made specially for me Like the gifts from old Finland Crisp hanky socks or mittens Wove with care and strength and love Reminding me of tales That we had spoken of 